In the third game, Botvinnik got his favorite position type, in which the opponent has an isolated pawn. Brandstein wrote in his annotations that once he got the isolated pawn, he knew that he would be tortured, that Botvinnik was going to exert very strong pressure on his isolated pawn. He would blockade it, attack it from the front, from the sides, and eventually probably even capture it. So let's see if Brandstein managed to resist this great pressure. But Vinnik started with d4, and Brandstein, as in first game, played e6, showing his readiness to play both the Dutch defense and the French defense. Unlike in the first game, but Vinnik played e4, and we have French defense. Knight d2, c5, and now black uh, inevitably gets the isolated pawn after e takes d, e takes d. Bishop b5 check, bishop d7, queen e2 check, bishop e7, and d takes c. As you see, the pawn is isolated now. Knight f6, knight f3, castles, castles, rook e8, knight b3, bishop takes c5. Of course, the queen is under attack, so white doesn't have time to capture the bishop. Queen d3, a6, bishop takes d7, knight takes d7, bishop g5. And here, Brandstein makes a move which looks a little bit strange. He played bishop f8. Why this move is strange? As you see, the pawn is isolated. The isolated pawn has both the shortcomings and advantages. Shortcoming is that uh, the pawn is weak, as there are no uh, pawns on uh, e-file and c-file to defend it, so it will be constantly under attack. Besides that, uh, white usually blockades this pawn, usually with a knight. It's a very good idea to place a knight uh, in front of it, and the knight would be very active. And black uh, tries to exert some pressure and keep under control this d4 square, the, the square that is in front of the isolated pawn. And the bishop does exactly this. And it would be more logical uh, to keep the bishop on this diagonal and uh, move it to a7 instead of f8. But Brandstein played bishop f8, uh, showing that he doesn't really care about blockading square uh, d4. The advantages of the isolated pawn is that uh, it exerts pressure on the opponent's position. As you see, it controls uh, very important central squares, e4 and c4, and black uh, pieces supported by the pawn can be placed very actively on c4 and e4. And that will be exactly the case. Uh, so uh, let's see if uh, black can defend the pawn and uh, play actively. Rook d1, queen c7, c3, h6, bishop h4, rook e4, bishop g3 attacking the queen, queen b6, knight d2 attacking the rook, rook e8, queen c2, rook c8, uh, creating unpleasant x-ray and preventing knight d4, which would be a terrible blunder because of queen takes d4, and of course after c takes d, the queen falls. So after rook c8, Batvinik played knight f3 taking under full control the blockading square on d4. g6, rook e1, bishop g7, rook takes, rook takes, bishop f4. So bishop is rerouted to e3 uh, with tempo, attacking the queen, and taking under control important uh, d4 square. And also on this diagonal, the bishop is attacking the weakness on h6. Bishop f8, h3, king h7, in order to uh, reinforce the defense of h6. Knight h2, knight e5, bishop e3, attacking the queen, queen c7, bishop d4, knight e4. As you see, the black pieces are active. And bishop takes e5. So, uh, when the opponent has the isolated pawn, it's always a good idea to exchange as many pieces as possible, because uh, then the weakness of the isolated pawn uh, would tell closer to the end game. It would be difficult to defend it. And... Uh, as the pieces are exchanged, uh, the side which has uh, isolated pawn wouldn't have uh, opportunity to play actively with pieces. So bishop, that's why bishop takes e5. Queen takes e5, knight g4 attacking the queen. And here Brandstein finds a very strong move, queen f4, leaving the pawn uh, unguarded. However, it would be very dangerous to accept this sacrifice if... Rook takes d5, then Brandstein prepared a very strong move, knight g3, threatening a terrible rook e1 check with checkmate next move. And of course, uh, f takes g is losing on the spot after rook e1 check, king h2, and queen f1, threatening checkmate. 
the only way uh, white can try to save the king is knight f6 check and g4 making a uh, room for the king however it wouldn't help after queen g1 check rook e3 check uh, bishop d6 check in order to deflect the rook from the fifth rank and after rook takes d6 g5 check and checkmate in a couple of moves would follow this case that's why after knight g3 white uh, would play something like rook d1 in order to defend the back rank but again knight e2 check would follow and uh, h5 and black has a uh, very good compensation for sacrificed pawn and initiative that's why after queen f4 but winning didn't capture the pawn and played queen c1 offering the exchange of queens so as i already told when the opponent has uh, isolated pawn it's a good idea to exchange as many pieces as possible because the end game would be almost always a winning queen d6 uh, this move uh, at first sight a uh, bad move because it places the queen on uh, the same file with a rook uh, and however it sets a trap it tempts white to make a natural looking move c4 which at first sight is very strong because it attacks the weakness on d5 which is pinned black cannot capture however Brandstein uh, prepared to this h5 and after rook takes d5 queen c7 knight is 3 bishop h6 very unpleasant move uh, pinning the knight and creating uh, very unpleasant pressure on this diagonal and also the rook also attacks the knight and if we take into consideration that the knight on e4 can eliminate the defender of the knight on e3 by sacrificing himself on f2 then we will see that black has a better uh, play so for example if rook d3 defending the knight then just queen f4 queen e1 knight takes f2 and after queen takes f2 and exchanges on e3 black would be better because in the end game the bishop would be much stronger than the knight because in the open position with uh, pawns on both sides a bishop is much stronger than the knight uh, as it can control both sides the king side and the queen side at the same time and the knight cannot do that that's why after uh, queen d6 but Phoenix didn't play c4 and played queen c2 here Brandstein by playing queen f4 uh, could uh, have repeated the position however instead of it he plays knight f6 it isn't very good as you will see because um, Brandstein will have serious difficulties in the end game knight takes f6 check queen takes f6 and uh, of course as d5 is uh, unguarded still white cannot exploit this rook takes d5 would be a terrible blunder after rook takes e1 check queen f4 check uh, white gets checkmated on h1 that's why after queen takes f6 uh, but Phoenix played queen d3 attacking uh, d5 and Brandstein makes a mistake here uh, he defends the pawn on d5 very passively by playing rook d8 it would be much better to uh, defend it actively rook e5 the rook defends it however it stays on the open e file for example if knight d4 bishop c5 knight f3 rook f5 all black pieces are very active however he played rook d8 queen e3 bishop g7 g3 h5 king g2 rook d6 knight d4 rook d7 knight f3 bishop h6 attacking the queen and queen d4 again uh, offering the queen exchange and this time Brandstein exchanges the queens and after knight takes d4 he makes another mistake he plays bishop g7 however it would be better to play king g7 moving the king towards the center and that would lead to a draw for example if c4 then uh, king f6 of course not d takes c because that would be a terrible blunder after knight f5 check the rook would fall so after c4 king f6 moving towards the center and after knight b3 b6 c takes d king e5 black returns the pawn uh, and uh, the king is very active in the center so that would be a draw however Brandstein instead of king g7 plays bishop g7 and now he has serious difficulties after Batvinik's very strong move knight c2 this move uh, creates two threats the first threat is uh, knight e3 attacking the pawn twice for example if black makes some random move let's say king h8 uh, then knight e3 d4 uh, 
knight c2, d3, and strong move, knight d4, attacking the pawn. And if uh, bishop takes d4, then white captures the pawn and the bishop is pinned. If the rook in this variation was on d8, then black uh, could have played bishop f6 defending the rook. So uh, let's say instead of uh, this random move king h8, black plays rook d8, so that this variation with knight e3 doesn't work. And now we can see the second threat uh, by playing knight c2, which Batwini created. It's knight b4. So the knight can attack the pawn also from b4. And after d4, c4. Now, with the next move, white will play knight d3, blockading the pawn. Uh, the knight would be very well placed on d3. And the bishop would be bad, because it would be limited by its own pawn. And white will also uh, will have a pawn majority on the queen side. So white will have an opportunity to create a passed pawn on the queen side. So white would be better. So, as you see, knight c2 created two threats, and, uh, but uh, Braunstein played a5 in order to prevent uh, knight b4. Now, uh, but still, knight e3 was an option, but Batvinik didn't uh, play it, and instead played a4. Uh, however, probably it uh, would be better to play knight e3. He didn't play knight e3 because of d4, Brandstein gives this variation, knight c2, d3, uh, knight d4, rook d8, uh, rook takes d3, uh, white of course uh, wins a pawn, but now black uh, has counterplay by playing b5, and king f3, b4. Now the bishop would be very active, the rook is very active, so for the pawn, black has some compensation. But white still is better, but white is a pawn up, so probably that's what Batvinik had to do. Uh, however, instead of it, he played a4, in order to prevent b5 in the previous variation, and only then he was planning to play knight e3, so he didn't want to give any chances to Brandstein. But it didn't work. Now, rook d8. So now this variation, uh, which I showed you earlier, doesn't work because the bishop uh, can uh, return to f6 and defend the rook. Knight e3, I mean. If knight e3, then d4, knight c2, d3. Now, knight d4 doesn't work because of bishop takes d4 and bishop f6. And if instead of uh, knight d4, knight e1 attacking the pawn, then d2, knight f3, and bishop f uh, h6. So black can defend the pawn, and this position, this endgame, would be very complicated. White, of course, is a pawn up, but black has counter chances. And uh, as Brandstein was very good uh, in tactics, um, but Winnick didn't want to uh, give him any chances, any tactical opportunities. So he played king f3. Bishop f6, knight d4, King g7, knight b5, king f8, knight c7, attacking the pawn twice. That's why d4, c4. And now white is threatening to play knight d5. Knight would be just uh, great on d5. And uh, attacking the bishop and also blocking the rook. So the pawn uh, would be shaky after that. But um, Brandstein finds... A, strong maneuver, bishop e7, and after knight d5, bishop c5. So now the bishop defends the pawn. And uh, king e2. At first sight, uh, white actually, what white ideally wants to do is to blockade the pawn uh, by rerouting the knight on d3, and uh, playing rook e1, rook would be very active on e-file, Ex ideally exchange the rooks, after which the uh, knight would be much stronger than the bishop and the king would be active. And by playing king e4, white would be better. Uh, but right away, knight f4 doesn't work. Uh, Brandstein gives the following variation. Rook d6, knight d3, attacking the bishop, bishop a7, rook e1, and now black plays rook c6, attacking the pawn on c4. If b3, then rook b6, attacking b3. So this is active defense by Brandstein. And if after rook c6, knight 
e5 defending c4 then uh, rook f6 check so black has counterplay in this uh, position that's why batvinik plays king e2 in order to blockade the pawn with the king so he doesn't want to give Bernstein any chances rook e8 check king d3 b6 g4 king g7 rook h1 and here it would be better to play h takes g h takes g and g5 however Bernstein made, made a weaker move he played h4 g5 now this pawn is weak rook e5 rook g1 so black attacked white defended king f8 f3 king g7 f4 now both players were in a uh, time trouble in this uh, end game rook e8 king d2 rook e6 and here instead of a strong move uh, rook g4 attacking the weakness uh, Batvinik made a mistake he played rook e1 uh, after which the exchange of rooks becomes inevitable and Batvinik uh, hoped that he would be better in this um, knight against bishop endgame as the knight is very strong however it wasn't the case after rook takes e1 king takes e1 king f8 king e2 king e8 king d3 king d7 king e4 king d6 knight f6 and king e6 Batvinik himself offered a draw and Bernstein accepted it why because there is nothing white can do for example if knight g4 then d3 and finally white can uh, capture this isolated pawn but after king takes d3 king f5 king is very active attacking f4 and there is no way white can defend it because e3 square is under black's control or if instead of uh, knight g4 king d3 then king f5 attacking the pawn on f4 knight d5 defending it king e6 king uh, e4 again d3 again uh, white can finally capture this pawn but king f5 again uh, active king would compens compensate for the loss of uh, the pawn b3 and uh, black just uh, waits bishop goes to g1 and returns to c5 and there is no way uh, white can strengthen the position the knight mu must stay on d5 in order to defend the pawn the king can defend it from e3 because the bishop controls it king e2 doesn't work with the idea of king f3 because as soon as white goes to e2 king would go to e4 and black would be even better so that's why uh, Batvinik just offered a draw and uh, Bernstein accepted it hit the like button and subscribe to help me grow the channel and see you in the analysis of the fourth game